Welcome back to the Wardrobe of Royal. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some more Stormcast Eternals battle line. This is a continuation on my previous video where I talked about the non-conditional battle line. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the conditional battle line. So these are battle line that gain the battle line um, keyword, so to speak, if you are taking them in a specific sub-faction or have a specific general. In my opinion, these guys tend to be more flavorful and interesting and kind of provide a more unique take on your Stormcast army to better fit your sub or general. A um, little bit more bookkeeping before we get started is a lot of these units have different names or are considered different units in GW's eyes and they have different points costs. But for all intents and purposes, they are just the same kit with a different weapon loadout. Um, so I will have, I will explain that when we get to the specific slides, but for the most part, I will have clumped all of those units in one section and just explain the different weapon options. Just be aware that these different weapon options come with different point costs and are technically different uh, units. So without further ado, let's get started. The first on our list is Annihilators and Annihilators with Grand Hammer. So this is kind of what I was talking about, where technically these are two different models and they have two different point costs um, and a slight variation on stats, but really the big thing is the weapon you equip them with. So for their stat line, their basic stats are four inch move, seven bravery, three wounds, and a two up save, or a three up save if you equip them with the Grand Hammer. For melee profiles, you have the Meteoric Hammer, a 1-inch reach, 3 attacks, 4 for the leader, 3s to hit, 3s to wound, 1 rend, 2 damage weapon, or you have the Meteoric Grand Hammer, 2-inch reach, 3 attacks, 4 for the leader, 3s to hit, 2s to wound, 2 rend, a massive 3 damage. For unique abilities, these guys are all about doing damage. They, uh, after they deep strike or are the set up on the battlefield, you roll a dice for each enemy unit within 10 inches, and each 3-up you deal D3 mortal wounds. Additionally, you get to reroll charge rolls from Deep Strike. Very, very powerful. This ability alone lets you get off a lot of damage from just setting them on the board, and you get a more reliable charge. One of the more nasty things about um, Deep Striking in general is you have that 9-inch charge. If you do the math, a nine inch charge roughly translates to a 26% chance, but with a reroll, it makes it a little bit more likely that you're gonna get your annihilators into combat the turn they arrive, which is really helpful. Their second unique ability is after charging, you pick one enemy unit within one inch and you roll a number of dice equal to the unmodified charge roll. And you get a few uh, negative modifiers if, um, it, the model is under strength. So if you are missing one model, you get a minus one. If you're missing two, you get a minus two. And then for each four up, you deal one mortal wound. So this is pretty, pretty strong. If you have all three, or if you have um, more than uh, three, you can do a whole lot of damage potentially on your charge. If you roll a massive 12 inch charge, that's 12 dice, uh, four up is a mortal wound. You can do some nasty stuff with that alongside the deep strike damage and the already insane numbers from their melee uh, weapons. Very, very powerful. So annihilators are a decimating deep strike threat. These guys are gonna be your, unironically, these are your hammers they are gonna come in and smash stuff. They have a massive damage potential and they are really tanky and hard to deal with. I think these guys are real scary and something you should consider adding into your list if you want kind of a juggernaut threat to put down anywhere on the field. To maximize the efficiency of annihilators, I would say you can use the regular shield annihilators in squads of three to help contest objectives and generally be annoying for your opponent. Uh, if you want to have a more hammer, uh, like a really p hard punch unit, I would take the Grand Hammer Annihilators in squads of six to nine if you just really want to mess your opponent up. Um, but I, I definitely really like Annihilators. I think they're a great unit. 
Next up are persecutors with hammers. So in order for these guys to uh, be battling, you need to have the subfaction Tempest Lords. Persecutors occupy a weird space in the Stormcast roster. Personally, I find their models beautiful, and that alone makes me want to take them, but they're kind of a weird, fast uh, skirmish unit with some melee and some missile capabilities. Their counterpart has a bit more uh, missile punch, where these guys are more about melee combat. So for their stat line, they have a 12-inch movement, which for most Stormcats units is really fast. They have 7 bravery, 2 wounds, and a 4-up save. For a melee profiles, you can equip them with either hammers or pair of hammers, and then one in three can have the grand hammer. The hammers have a one inch reach, two attacks, three for the leader, threes to hit, threes to wound, one rend, one damage. The pair of hammers is the exact same, except it has one more attack, so you three attacks, four for the leader, and then the rest is the same. The grand hammer is a little bit different. It is one inch reach, two attacks, three attacks for the leader, twos to hit, 3 is to wound, 1 rend, 2 damage. For missile profiles, it is 9 inch reach, 2 attacks, 3 is for the leader, 4 is to hit, 4 is to wound, 1 rend, 1 damage. And then the pair of hammers is the exact same, only it has uh, another uh, attack. Some other uh, unique abilities to the prosecutors is they have fly, of course, they have angelic wings. They do a massive 3d6 charge, which is really powerful. And then if you equip them with the hammers, they get a plus one to their save. If half of the models in the unit have hammers, this is basically to, to account for the one in three having the grand hammers. Uh, I think these units are interesting. Definitely something to consider besides the beautiful sculpts. They're a little bit odd having um, two wounds and a four up save at base and kind of a okay melee profile, but really the massive threat range of these guys is something to consider. So I think prosecutors are a fast pseudo cavalry unit. They're good for tagging units with their 3d6 charge and being able to have a little bit of ranged combat as well as doing heavy stuff in melee. For prosecutors with hammers, I think that you should take in squads of 3 to 6 and harass your opponent's flanks or, like I say, tag key units to keep them from uh, messing with your important units. Next up is the prosecutors with javelins. These are the ranged variants of the prosecutors. Just like their melee variants, you need the subfaction Tempest Lords. Their stat line is 12-inch uh, move, 7 bravery, 2 wounds, and a 3-up save. For melee profiles, it's uh, the javelin, which is 3 inch reach, 1 attack, 2's for the leader, 4's and 4's to hit and wound, 1 rend, 1 damage. Then the trident, a 3 inch reach, 1 attack, 2's for the leader, 4's to hit, 4's to wound, 1 rend, 2 damage. The missile profile is 18 inches for the javelin, 1 inch reach, or excuse me, 1 attack, 2 attacks for the leader, 3's to hit, 3's to wound, one rend, one damage. The trident is the exact same, except it has two damage. For unique abilities, it is similar to the prosecutors where they have fly and they have the 3d6 charge and one and three can have the javelin. So a little bit more simple than the prosecutors with hammers. So similarly with the other prosecutors, they are fast pseudo cav, good for tagging units, but they are a bit more ranged focused. So if you want to focus on kind of skirting around and doing some ranged fire or tagging and chipping away uh, some enemies with the 18 inch reach javelins, this is gonna be a better option. But generally speaking, these are gonna function a lot similarly to the other variant of prosecutors. Next up is Dracothian Guard. These are separated into a lot of different um, unit names. Basically, every different um, melee profile or ranged profile is considered a different unit, so just keep that in mind whenever you're looking for them. Uh, the only things that are shared across all of the variants are the Clawed Fangs and the Storm Blast. Those are the mount attacks. Um, but beyond that, they have a lot of different uh, things to choose from. For stat lines, all of them share 10 inch move, 7 bravery, 6 wounds, and a 3 up save. For the melee profiles, the claw and fangs, one inch reach, three attacks, 
threes to hit, threes to wound, two rend, two damage. Then the hammer units have one inch reach, three attacks, threes to hit, threes to wound, two rend, two damage. The axes have one inch reach, five attacks, threes to hit, threes to wound, two rend, one damage. The glaives have one inch reach, five attacks, threes to hit, threes to wound, two rend, one damage. And then the war blade, what this is, it, it is the melee profile you get if you choose the ranged variant. So if you choose the Dracothian Guard with the Volley Storm Crossbow, you also get the Warblade. The Warblade has one inch reach, three attacks, threes to hit, fours to wound, one rend, one damage. For missile profiles, not melee profiles, that's a type on my end. The Storm Blast is a breath attack, so it is a 12 inch reach, and on a four up, the target takes D3 mortal wounds. The Volley Storm Crossbow, 12 inch reach, three attacks, threes to hit, threes to wound, one rend, one damage. For unique abilities, these are all tied to the various different um, weapon types. Six is to hit with the hammers, deal two mortal wounds. You get plus two attacks if your target unit has more uh, models than the Trucothian guard unit. For the axes, then the glaive has damage three if you make a charge. And six is to hit with the volley storm crossbow explode, scoring two hits. So, uh, what are these various battlefield roles? So here's kind of my breakdown of things. Your hammer unit is really powerful just because it gets through heavy armor and gets you to the ward save step. Armor save and armor stacking is very powerful in third edition, so being able to skip that with mortal wounds potentially is definitely something to consider. Axes are best against light infantry or armies that don't have uh, ward saves and stuff like that. Uh, glaives, I think, are a contender for one of the better weapon choices. They make the Dracothian Guard a devastating shock cavalry, doing the most effective damage uh, if you make that charge, but then fall off after you charge. Uh, crossbows are a little bit weak, I think. They have they kind of make the Dracothian Guard a heavy skirmish cav, but I think they serve a better purpose with the glaives or the hammers. But all that said. I think all of the weapon options are viable. My personal picks would be the glaive or the hammer, and I would take these guys in squads of two to four. Additionally, you can take these in squads of singles. Um, they have all the same stats and all that jazz. It's just, it's only one model, just something else to consider. Before I move on, I'd like to give a special shout out to my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. A special thanks to Nick Hoff. Thank you very, very much. Uh, if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter and get uh, various benefits, including early access videos, I upload a Patreon exclusive video to the Spirit of Dirthu tier Patreon supporters uh, once every week. I try to upload those on Saturdays. Um, you know, other benefits include special Discord access and uh, other avenues to communicate with me directly. Um, speaking of the Discord, if you want another avenue to uh, help support the community, joining the Discord is a great way to do that. Uh, we are currently running two competitions on there right now, a painting competition and a uh, TTS or Tabletop Simulator game night. So come on down and uh, check that out. The link will be in the description. Next up are the Decimators, Protectors, and Retributioners. In order to take these, you need the Knights Excelsior's subfaction. They all have a stat line of 4 inch move, 7 bravery, 3 wounds, and a 3 up save. The various melee profiles represent the different unit names. The uh, axes have a 1 inch reach, 5 attacks, 6 for the leader, 3's to hit, 3's to wound, 2 rend, 1 damage. The glaives have a 3 inch reach, 5 attacks, 6 is for the leader, 3's uh, to hit, 3's to wound, 2 rend, 1 damage. Then the hammer has one inch reach, three attacks, four for the leader, threes to hit, threes to wound, two rend, two damage. And then some uh, models in the unit can be equipped with the star soul mace. You, it has a one inch reach and it is just a simple on a two up, you deal d3 mortal wounds to a target. Pretty nice. For unique abilities, these are tied to the various different weapon choices you get. For the axes, you get a plus two attack if the target has more models than the decimator unit. If you equip them with the glaive, they get a plus one to save. And then hammers deal uh, two mortal wounds on sixes to hit. So basically all the special effects that you got from the storm, uh, 
the Dracothian Guard. A very powerful unit. I think these guys are kind of competing with the Annihilators for a hammer blow unit, something to kind of do a lot of your damage, but very good regardless, generally because you get five models instead of uh, three for the Annihilators. So out of all of these, I think that they are a great unit to have, either one or two of them, if you want something that doesn't need to deep strike to get a little bit of their uh, damage off. Uh, all of the weapon choices are definitely viable. Axes for hordes, hammer for heavy armor, and then glaive for defense. Um, to maximize their efficientness, I would take in squads of 5 to 10, depending on what you plan to use them for and the weapons you plan to use. Larger squads are going to benefit from the glaive extra range if you are planning to take the 10 squad or even a 15 squad if you wanted to double reinforce. Next up is the Vanguard Hunters. To take these guys, you need the Astral Templars subfaction. Uh, they have a stat line of 6 inch move, 7 bravery, 2 wounds, 4 up save. They have 2, or excuse me, they have 1 melee, uh, melee profile, the Storm Rot weapons, 1 inch reach, 2 attacks, 3 attacks for the leader, 3s to hit, 3s to wound, 1 rend, 1 damage, and a missile profile of the Bolt Storm pistol, 12 inch reach, Two attacks, three for the leader, fours to hit, fours to wound, one rend, one damage. One in five can have a compass, and if the unit has a compass, they can teleport. These Vanguard Hunters are really strong. They are amazingly annoying for ranged skirmish units and just teleporting around the board where your enemy doesn't want you and plinking a few shots into them. They are very cheap for what they do. Uh, definitely a unit to consider. To maximize their efficientness, take in squads of 10 to 15 and mostly just do everything in your power to annoy your opponent with them. Teleport all over the board just out of reach and uh, shoot away at them. Next up is a similar unit in the Vanguard Palindors. You need a set faction for the Astral Templars. You have a stat line of 12 inch move, 7 bravery, 5 wounds, and a 4 up save. You have a few melee profiles to choose from. The Shock Axe, which is one inch reach, three attacks, three, uh, four for the leader, excuse me. Uh, threes to hit, threes to wound, one rend, d3 damage. And then the Javelin, one inch reach, one attacks, twos for the leader, threes to hit, threes to wound, one rend, two damage. And then the Mount Attacks, the Razor Beak and Claw, one inch reach, three attacks, threes to hit, threes to wound, two rend, one damage. And then the missile profiles, you have two different options to choose from. You have the Bolt Storm Pistol, 12 inch reach, two attacks, three for the leader, force to hit, force to wound, one rend, one damage. And then you have the Javelins, a one inch reach, one attack, twos for the leader, threes to hit, threes to wound, one rend, two damage. You can have the pistol and axe combo or the javelin. Those are your two uh, weapon options. And similar to the Vanguard Hunters, they can teleport. So they are a similarly annoying ranged skirmish unit to the Vanguard Hunters. They are cheap and they are a little bit tanky and can kind of screen out your Vanguard Hunters if that's what you're wanting to do. So I think you should uh, keep Vanguard Palindors next to your Hunters and equip them with the Javelins. But I think the weapon option is kind of personal preference. Next up is the Vigilers. These are your Age of Sigmar 3.0 Archer units for Stormcast. Uh, in order to take these as a battle line, you need a Knight's uh, Judicator General. For stat line, they have a 6 inch move, 7 bravery, 2 wounds, and a 4 up save. They have a melee profile with a Storm Blade, 1 inch reach, 2 attacks, 3s to hit, 3s to wound, 1 rend, 1 damage. And then they have a missile profile, the Storm Collar Bow, 1 inch, or excuse me, 18 inch reach, 2 attacks, 3s for the leader. 3s to hit, 3s to wound, 1 rend, 1 damage. And then here's what really sets them apart. If any wounds are allotted to an enemy via the Stormcaster bow, that unit gets plus 1 to hit, uh, or that unit, all of your Stormcast units get plus 1 to hit that target. So it's kind of like you shoot them with your bow, and if you damage anything with that bow, for your turn, you get a plus 1 to hit that target. Really powerful. So these are mostly a support archer unit, which is kind of interesting. There isn't very many of these, uh, as far as I can think, um, in the game, let alone with Stormcast. They're a little expensive for what they are, 
but they can be used efficiently. And I think that if you take them in squads of five and use them to mark key targets for your other units to try and focus down, that is definitely something you should do. Next up are the infamous Storm Drake Guard. In order to take these as battle line, you need a uh, Draconith or Storm Drake General. They have a 12 inch move, eight bravery, nine wounds and a three up save. They have a few different melee profiles to choose from and a mount profile. They have the Lance, uh, two inch reach, two attacks, three for the leader, threes to hit, threes to wound, two rend, or excuse me, one rend, one damage, and then the Warblade, one inch reach, six attacks, seven for the leader, three, uh, threes to hit, threes to wound, one rend, one damage. Then the Mount Attack, Fangs and Talons, three inch reach, four attacks, threes to hit, threes to wound, two rend, two damage. For the missile profile, they have a breath attack, the flame stream, 12 inch reach, and you roll a dice on, on a one to two, nothing happens. Three to four, D3 mortal wounds. On a five to six, D6 mortal wounds to your target. For unique abilities, they have fly and lance. The lance weapon has a rend of two and damage two if you make a charge move. They have a four up spell ward. And after this unit attacks an enemy, you can pick one enemy unit within one inch and you roll a dice. If greater than the wound characteristic, then one model from that unit is slain. Then you have a once per battle can make a normal move in the hero phase. Uh, if you are within 12 inches of an enemy, you must make a charge on a two up. Or excuse me, can make a charge. You, not, you don't have to if you don't want to. So... The Stormdrake Guard is currently the boogeyman of AOS 3. They've kind of gone through a series of uh, nerfs before they were even launched. So they were kind of a little bit scary, and even in their current state, they're kind of scary. They have a lot of damage and some mortal wound output, and they have some great once per game movement tools. To maximize the efficiency of Storm Drake Guards, I would you can take either weapon option. I think the lances just edge out the blades because of the two inch rend is very nice, um, but either can work. So that was the second part to the Stormcast Eternal battle line options. There's a lot of fun stuff here, and I think personally the standout units for me are the Annihilators and the um, Redemptor, Decimator, and Protector trio. But I also just really liked the prosecutors, but mostly that's just I like the models and I think they look pretty. But tell me what your thoughts in the comments below. What units do you really like to run? I'd be curious to hear your thoughts and your reasonings behind it. If you enjoyed this type of content, consider subscribing. And if you liked the video, please leave a like or a comment. This has been the Wargrove of Will, and I'll talk to you guys next time.